15 people on the call. Um, it looks like we have started the recording, so it's time to get serious. Um, Kevin, I will let, let get my timer started so I know that we're, we're on time. So uh, I want to just say thank you to everyone for joining. I'm sure we'll get some people who roll in over time. Um, want to go to the next slide, uh, Kevin? You know, I just wanted to kind of introduce you to what we're going to be doing today. First off, we'll go through and introduce ourselves. I'll spend just a couple of seconds discussing what Serum is doing around helping our customers protect themselves from cyber threats and be better positioned to protect themselves against it. Um, talk a little bit about why did Serium opt to partner with Lumera? What was the compelling events? And then Kevin and I are going to kind of have a, a Q&A about some of the things that are going on in the industry with, with Lumera and ourselves. And then lastly, Jacob is going to give us a demonstration followed by some Q&A. So I'll kick off the introductions. My name is Scott Nelson. Uh, if I haven't met you, I look forward to. I am the Director of Cybersecurity here at Serium Networks. I joined Serium after a 15-year career at Cisco Systems, the last seven of which I was helping build out the go-to-market practice for the commercial cybersecurity market. Um, at that, in that role, I got to know somebody named Kevin Malkin. So Kevin, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Scott. Uh, my name is Kevin Malkin, as Scott mentioned. Um, as far as my role goes, I am uh, an account executive at Lumera, but also Sirium's partner manager. And so I am uh, essentially all things Sirium when it comes to Lumera. And so if you know you ever uh, look to take a you know a closer look at Lumera or, or want to dive a little bit deeper, you know there's a very good chance that you will be working with me on that as well. So, Jacob, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, th thanks, Kevin, and you know, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you're located today. Uh, my name is Jacob Julian. I'm a technical solutions architect with Bluemira, which is really just a fancy way of saying I'm, I'm a technical point of contact for our customers and anyone who's interested in trialing the product. So I've worked with uh, you know hundreds of customers for deployments throughout my my career. I've spent you know, five and a half years at uh, Duo Security, which was acquired by Cisco, so then Cisco, uh, and then now I am over here at Blumera. So, uh, if there's any sort of technical questions, feel free to put those in the Q and Q and A, and I'll be watching that as we go along. Uh, that being said, you know, Scott, for any of our, our you know attendees here who might not be familiar with Serium, do you mind just spending a few minutes talking about maybe who who, who you are and what you do and you know, where you're looking to go in the security space? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, you know, when I left Cisco, it was a question of what do I do next? And I was really attracted to Serium because of this slide. Um, if you look at the, the bottom left, it is we are decorated um, with tons of high quality certifications, and that is necessary to serve our customers well. I wanted to be associated with an organization that was excellent at what they do. Um, you also see that bear out here on the slide that while we certainly have people in the front of the field talking to our customers, it's backed up by a very large engineering organization. Um, and then um, I like the geography, right? We, we aren't just one place. We're in the Northwest. We, we've got people in Idaho, people in Spokane, um, et cetera. So, um, that really is exciting to me to be part of a, of a small uh, but dedicated group of people, 200 strong, uh, with expertise across the entire life cycle from collaboration to enterprise networking to data center and, and obviously security. So next slide. Um, if we look at the practice inside of Serium, you know, what we want to be able to do is assist our customers on a whole life cycle basis. You know, we want to start by being able to assess what's going on in your network, whether that is simply um, looking at your defensive controls or comparing that against a cybersecurity framework like NIST. We then have expertise and excellence on the consult, design, and implementation of defensive controls. And then we're going to come back and we're going to test those. 
And we've got a customer service organization that exists throughout this process to ensure that our solutions are being successfully deployed and adopted by your organization. Um, and in some instances, more and more of our customers have come to us and said, hey, can you help us manage it? Um, so we have the ability to take ownership of the green light, red light elements of uh, your infrastructure to make sure that your firewalls are working, that your VPN tunnels are working, and if not, you can call us to help. And then we will come back as appropriate, optimize the, the, the solutions, and then it's time again to, to start that cycle again through some, some reassessment. If we go to the next slide, Kevin. So, you know, when I came in and, and started looking around and meeting customers, you know, it, it kind of created a need for us to uh, reevaluate some of our line card. Um, my customers that I talked to were really frustrated. They were, they were frustrated in many cases with the legacy SIMs that they worked with. Uh, they were managed, they were frustrated in some cases with the managed uh, service providers they had. Others were frustrated that they didn't uh, have any ability to really afford some of those solutions and, and were trying to do everything with Excel and sticky notes and tablets when things started alarming. Um, internally, within our managed practice, we started talking about, well, how can we help our customers? Some of our customers were saying, if you manage my equipment, could you maybe kind of help me look when I'm sleeping if something's alert, alerting? So we needed to do that. And, you know, with our customers need, need for better threat detection and response, um, we have a great partnership with Cisco. We love Cisco. Um, and their SecureX platform really brings a lot of value. But there's some things that SecureX didn't do. It didn't have a great model for looking to see if someone's credentials had been escalated, that suddenly they, they went from being a user to an admin. So I knew Kevin from Cisco, and one day Kevin called me up and goes, hey, you know, what are you doing in the threat detection and response space? And I'm like, uh, do you have a key logger on my computer? Because I'm really trying to figure this out, because I've got customers who want it, we want to do it. And he goes, let me show you what we're doing at Bloomera. And the more I looked at it, the more excited I was, and equally I was confident because uh, by happenstance, Bloomera has, I think, 50% ex-Duo employees at, the, at it. And, you know, Duo did such a brilliant job disrupting the market with its platform, and they're bringing a similar methodology and mindset to the, the sim space. You know, let's make it simple. Let's make it approachable. Let's make it cost effective. So the, for those people who couldn't, didn't think they could afford a SIM, let's, let's get them one. And for those customers who were frustrated at the cost of ownership, the cost of acquisition, and the, the FTE costs of a SIM, let's see if we can't make their lives a little easier. So for me, it was a win you know, for our customers, for our company, as well as having confidence that if I step forward and say, you should look at Bloomera, I know that Bloomera is going to not let me down. So, um, you know, Kevin, I think, you know, one of the questions I get, we've talked about it a ton, you know, I keep saying SIM like it's everybody understands that. I mean, what, what would you define a SIM to be? What, what is a SIM? Yeah, no, I appreciate that, Scott, and, and that kind of introduction of, of what we're doing and, yeah, I mean, I think as we get into this, right, um, you know, we, we want to basically start at the basics, right? And, and we'll kind of evolve of, you know, what is a SIM and why and, um, you know, and, and what what challenges is Blue Mirror is solving and all of that. And as Scott mentioned, right, we are, you know, you know, really disrupting this space and, and doing things very differently to, to simplify everything from the, the point of entry to management and all of that. But yeah, I mean, to start with, you know, what is a SIM, right? I mean, of course it is uh, security information and event management, but like Jacob, maybe even if you wanna just kind of jump in on kind of what the general concept is and, and how people think of it kind of historically. Yeah, I think it's the natural next stage in evolution of like a central logging store, right? Something like a central syslog store has been around for a long time. And 
when we look at what a SIM is and the value of it, it's really the next stage from that. It definitely includes having that centralized log storage that's you know, a, a core component of any functional SIM. And it's actually one that a lot of organizations implementing SIM do struggle with is connecting their applications to it. Uh, but it's all the pieces that happen after that to make a SIM different. It's the you know, large scale log collection, the correlation, the normalizing data, and it's the reporting on that that happens afterwards. There's a lot that goes into that, including you, know, you have to maintain the parsing as you're, you're pulling up here, right? You have to maintain the parsing. So you know, what does a, a Cisco Firepower log actually look like compared to an ASA log? And when you update firmware and that changes, you know, traditionally you've had to go in and maintain that in order to maintain the functionality of your SIM. Then it's also looking at, okay, well, now that I have all this data, how do I do something useful with it? I have it, which is great, but well, what do you do? Well, there's, there's a lot you can do. You can run reporting on it. Do you get operational intelligence to know, okay, I can query all of my domain controllers right now with a single solution instead of going from one to the next to the next, trying to find the single ID that I'm looking for. But you can also use it for security value. And traditionally, SIMs, didn't have detection rules and threat intelligence built in. They have had add-ons in the last five years, additional SKUs that can you know, transform a legacy or a typical SIM into a, a more security-minded proactive tool. But that's only a, a real recent development in the grand scheme of things. And when we look at a SIM, right, all of what you have on the slide are components that traditionally you would have had to take care of. And our, our customers, right, they refer to this as the care and feeding of a SIM. You need to constantly maintain it to maintain its effectiveness. And when I think of a SIM, right, this is what I think of traditionally. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's interesting because, you know, security is in the name or in the acronym of SIM, right? But rarely are, have people thought of SIMs as a proactive you know, type of, of security solution, right? Looking for threats, right? And, you know, historically, right, it might have been that kind of eyes on glass, like actual human aspect of somebody, you know, in, in like that SOC type of term, you know, somebody reviewing all of those lock, logs to try and get some type of proactive threat detection. But um, like Jacob said, right, that threat detection is is kind of a newer concept right but it's been very very difficult to to do for for most organizations so so then we're talking about sim you know all of our customers are being asked to buy more and more things to protect against more and more things I mean, where does this fit in a you know a customer's overall security architecture their posture you know yeah, no, I mean, that, that's a, it's a good question because, again, right, I mean, I think this whole threat detection in response is, is on the newer side, right, and, um, you know, when I bring this up, right, because the whole idea of, of threat detection is, is finding, you know, that when somebody is in your environment, right, and when you look at the overall security posture of an organization, you know, you can kind of categorize it into two very, very general categories, right, of your prevention and your detection, right? Prevention is your MFAs and your endpoint systems and uh, DNS and all of that, right? I mean, I could go on and on because it's an endless game of catch up. There's always a new evolution of threats and new entry points. And a great example of that is the exchange vulnerability, you know, solar winds, right? All of these were new entry points for, for organizations. And, you know, I think that the general consensus for most security professionals is that a security event is only a matter of when and not if, right? And that when is really where the threat detection comes in. You know, as you can see here, you have your, uh, you know, if you didn't have a way of detecting these type of things, People could be within your organization poking around for you know, hundreds of days until that flip that switch gets flipped, and, and that's really you know some of the that's I, I, where I would say we fit overall. Jacob, anything you would add to that? Or 
Yeah, I, I, I think that you, it's the, you can have as many prevention tools and you should as reasonable for your organization, right? They have a real legitimate value, but there's always something new. There's always uh, the possibility of a misconfiguration or a machine that didn't get, you know, that security software installed. And, you know, you really do need a detection software for those cases, not only to detect it real time, but also to do retrospective analysis. If there was an incident, do you have the ability to go back in time and determine where something was seen and at what point and where it spread? So I've gotten feedback. I'm hard to hear. So I apologize. I'm talking louder and slower. Hopefully this addresses the concern. I feel like I'm yelling. Um, so customers have all these tools. They have all the alarms going off in those tools. What does Blue Mara catch differently that maybe I, I, I don't see in my normal kind of firepower dashboard. Yeah, you, you could think of this a, a couple of different ways, right? We're not just forwarding existing alerts that come from maybe Cisco umbrella or another product, right? A lot of the time we are looking at single event types. So, you know, the event ID that's generated when somebody is escalated to a privileged AD group, right? That's a single event. We're also looking at behaviors over time. And maybe with Umbrella, I'm not necessarily interested if, you know, one person browses to a bad site, but if, you know, a dozen or 10 people do in a short amount of time and they're browsing to the same site, you know, that's a pattern that I want to be alerted on. And so that's where the correlation power of a SIM of something like Blue Mira for a threat defense tooling, that's where we can come in and really uh, empower the existing security stack that you have. We're not trying to replace them by any means. We're trying to uh, build upon those and use the data for multiple tools to give you a, a big picture. Now, what that means is that you also have the ability to analyze, you know, non-security related logs and turn them into security information. So if we take an incident like ransomware, well, it's not a single event that ever leads to ransomware. It's a series of things that have gone wrong, a series of events that get someone that foothold in the environment, that gets them that lateral movement to do a privileged escalation and then create additional admin accounts and then do the reconnaissance and stay in that environment for that, you know, however many days it takes them or weeks or months. So with something like Blue Mira, right, we're giving you an insight into everything that's happening in your environment, but we're doing it at the earlier stages so that, you know, you can detect and prevent some of these worst stage attacks. It's not a, a necessarily a, a game of, oh, I, I can just detect it. It's a game of, I can detect it, I can detect it early and then do something about it to prevent a larger scale attack. So while you know what's on the screen is by no means the limit of what we detect on, right? Sometimes these are some of the more common areas of what we see, right? It's anything from password spraying that leads to a, a breached account to uh, you know, actual machines connecting out to Cobalt Strike servers and, you know, very well-known exploits. With the exchange vulnerability that we saw earlier in the month, it was web shells being dropped onto those exchange servers that we detected that later led to ransomware. So it, it is a combination of things uh, that really a good SIM and a good threat detection product can give you insight into that you normally wouldn't have at all. So, I mean... That's one of the reasons we were so attractive, right? Was getting people through stuff quickly. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah, you, you know, one thing I'll, I'll kind of add to that, right, is I think generally speaking, uh, when you think of things like ransomware, which of course is probably one of the biggest buzzwords in security today. And um, honestly, it's more than a buzzword, right? I mean, it's been around for a very long time, but it's, it's only getting worse, right? I mean, when you look at these attackers, it's a really easy way to monetize what they're doing, right? Stolen data needs to be sold or monetized somehow. That's difficult. Ransomware is easy. 
And, and I think it also speaks to the low hanging fruit of these type of attacks as well, right? They're always looking at the easiest point of entry, low hanging fruit. And to some extent that is very much these days, SMB and mid market type of companies, because they also know that most of these type of organizations don't have effective threat detection solutions. Um, and, you know, I, I have this slide up and I don't like it from a perspective of, it, of a like scare tactic by any means, but I think it's important to understand the impact of a business, right? It, it is less on the money side and more on the, what is the impact of your business being shut down for a day a two, or two or a week, right? And, you know, all these teams that we hear about <laughs> that are now looking at these sims because they had a ransomware issue and you know the the, the PST, uh, PTSD that they talk about right of the the weeks and months of of the kind of retroactive fixing kind of thing so um, you know I think that's always an important thing to put in perspective so but yeah. no I, I I appreciate it I, I don't like to sell with fear either but I'm working right now with a customer who experienced a breach, who's a nonprofit doing some of the most noble work you can imagine. So if they're going after people like that, there's nobody who's safe. And so I really, I see the value of being able to take all the logs from disparate tools, deduplicate some of the noise, get me onto threat faster, are there other things that a customer might experience with Duo, Blumera? I saw Kevin's face and I thought <laughs> Duo. With, with Blumera, that, that maybe is more than just threat defense? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, th this is, of course, very high level. But, you know, generally speaking, when we talk to customers, there's two primary reasons why they might be talking to us. And many times it's kind of a... Um, both reasons, but, you know, compliance is a big thing. Um, you know, when you look at any of these compliance, any of these compliances and more, right, almost all of them have a need for a SIM. And, uh, you know, when you look at all of the things that you need to check off to get to these type of compliances, generally SIMs uh, do check off a huge portion of those, which uh, can be really important too. But, Jake, anything you would add to that, or yeah, it's I mean it's a core tenant, right? To have centralized logging for all of these. I think we see very commonly NIST 800-171 requirements that are met uh, exclusively in some cases around the audit and accountability section when it comes to a sim. And one of the great things about Blumera is actually that we're we're not just a sim, right? We're not just a log collector. We're not just a threat defense product. We're also a, a hosted solution, which means your logs are safe off-site and off-site log storage is a tremendous benefit. And a lot of people don't necessarily think about it, but if you are an attacker, right, and you gain a foothold in an environment and I make some changes on a server, maybe it's the domain controller. Well, what am I going to do next? I want to cover my steps. So I'm going to delete that event log. And if you don't have off-site storage, if you don't have something that you're sending those logs to and, and preserving them, and you go to try to do that investigation, you're, you're out of luck. That also means that they're tamper-proof, so you don't have insider threat of the risk of somebody tampering logs when they're, they're off-site. So there are a lot of tertiary benefits when it comes to this, uh, when it's related to compliance. So a SIM is not a brand new idea. Blumera is not inventing the SIM. There's tons of choices out there. I mean, what do those look like for a customer? You know, and ultimately we'll probably get to why you are better, but what are the choices that they have to consider? Yeah, um, honestly, the, the choices haven't been great in the past. And, and it's a big reason why organizations, you know, many SMB and mid-market companies don't have a SIM or don't have a an effective SIM, right? And so, you know, generally speaking, you know, I'd say that there's probably three areas that, you know, people have taken three approaches, right? You have kind of the, the very manual, like, hey, we're collecting logs on our own and we're gonna manually go through them. 
and it's very tedious, right? And, and people generally don't get a lot of value out of it because it just kind of gets forgotten because you have many other jobs to do. Um, there is these legacy sims um, that are extremely complex and we'll talk a little bit about that and the challenges with it. And then there's the uh, the kind of managed service, right? We, you know, for many of these organizations say, we don't have these resources, so we're gonna go to have a managed service do it. And generally speaking, the, the level of uh, effectiveness only goes up slightly, but what does go up dramatically is the cost, right? So it's again, that, that kind of point of entry is very, very difficult. But to kind of understand the, this space, right? I mean, really what it comes down to is to have an effective SIM requires a very large and very specialized team, right? And that's why many of these you know, large organizations have those type of resources, but it's, uh, there, there's so much complexity that goes into keeping them, or well, implementing first off and, and keeping it fine tuned. You know, J uh, Jacob mentioned kind of all the steps that go into, into a SIM and, and each one of those requires an expertise, right? And so um, that can be really challenging. And when you don't have that, you know, let's say fine tuning, right then you get to this point where you get to what i think is a, a pretty common term in the industry is alert fatigue right because you're not keeping up with kind of latest trends and you know ultimately you know any kind of any event you might get an alert for it and at some point once you get so many alerts you don't know what's an important one and you just ignore them all Right, and it's uh, it's a really common problem, quite frankly, and one of the things that we hear very, very often. You know, one one other point I want to make here too is is around that expertise. You know, I think you know one of the things that we hear most often is that, um, you know, I have a team of jack of all trades, or you know, we wear a lot of hats, and you know, maybe not a lot of dedicated security resources. One, there's a there's not a lot of them, right? There's a shortage of those type of resources and they're hard to get. Um, so, you know, if you think about what goes into keeping up with an effective SIM is, you know, it's a full-time job. I mean, understanding what the new current threats are and keeping that SIM up to date. And, you know, you think about like the exchange vulnerability, right? I mean, there's new type of detections, new type of things you need to be looking for every single day. And without that, right, you, you just don't have effectiveness. So you, you've gotten me excited to get a SIM, right? I mean, everybody <laughs> needs one. Um, all I just need to do is spend a lot of money, hire a lot of people, and it'll be great. I mean, what is Blue Merit doing, you know, to kind of address that? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we can kind of shift gears probably more into, like, what is Blue Merit doing at this point, right? And, um, and why is it different? You know, again, I just want to touch on like the effectiveness, right? And be, before we jump over there too, right? I mean, you know, when you think about what goes into these legacy sims, I mean, generally you are looking at multi months to deploy, right? Maybe even in some situations like a year or so, but just large teams, right? And, and um, you know, generally we'll hear a lot of times that, you know, we probably only are about 20% effective um, because of, probably that expertise within an organization. So it's really a challenge. But I think if we now kind of talk about, you know, what is Blue Mira and why, why is it all different, right? And so, um, you know, to start off with, right, we are a, a cloud sim, like Jacob had mentioned, you know, and there's a lot of advantages in not only the security that we're providing that we have that cloud storage and um, you know there's no way for it to be deleted or, or anything like that but i think from an ease of use as well there's nothing there's very very little that needs to be deployed from an infrastructure perspective and keeping up with storage and all of those type of things but also it, it allows us to do very very quick and easy implementations we have pre-built integrations um, where generally speaking, if, you know, all we really need to do with you to get deployed is essentially get to the point where all of those logs are getting to us, 
and and we can probably touch on how we're doing that as we get into more of the demo but all we need to do is that and we do the rest right all of this complexity that is the service that we are providing right we, we like to say the magic right but we have we have a team of of security analysts that are living and breathing this every single day keeping these things up to date uh, monitoring uh, you know all of the the threat feeds and and message boards and understanding what is going on out there. A good example might even be this exchange vulnerability. We notified all of our customers before um, Microsoft even did that. Uh, you know this was a potential threat, and um, you know immediately went into the process of developing detection rules and all of that. So next, right? Once we do all of that ma magic, the real key is that we are now focusing on providing only valuable valuable security alerts and actionable, right? So that when you get an alert, you know it is something that is worth taking a look at rather than getting all of that alert fatigue. And so we'll talk a little bit more on what we're doing there. And then next, right, is what happens when you get an alert, right? The, the whole taking action part this is another area that we hear about having, you know, this team of jack of all trades. We don't have that security expertise. And that's where we come in as well. We're, we're automating where possible with any type of actions. We are um, providing playbooks and workflows on how to respond. And we also provide access to our security analyst team right within the application as well to provide any additional um, uh, assistance or or again kind of that expertise as well so but uh yeah anything uh, you would add jacob or yeah i think you covered it pretty well kevin i mean the reality is for most of our customers that we're, we're working with in a trial situation we can get them you know up and running in two hours. After that, I tell people that's your configuration, right? Your configuration is send us the locks and then we'll take care of the rest. It's really a great spot to be in. Yeah, I mean, it's really incredible. I mean, we really focus on uh, the high value, high fidelity security, right? You know, when you talk about, you know, so many of these organizations that are only 20, 30% effective, Right. I mean, imagine maybe even going from zero because you don't have any logging, right? Going to that, you know, 90, you know, to 95% effectiveness in, in a very, very short period of time, right? Talking about like time to security and time to value is, is you know, unheard of, honestly. Um, you know, just want to quickly walk you through like that workflow, what that looks like, right? So, you know, we talked about we have those pre built integrations. Right. And then all we are doing is then ingesting those logs and we are then, you know, doing all that magic up in the cloud of, of making sure that you get the alerts when necessary. And when we can automate, we will. Right? And Jacob will probably show you that in the demo when we can't. Right. We are then providing that playbooks. This is a really like, I mean, it's it's a really important thing because, you know, not only is it, you know, kind of helping being able to remediate these type of things, but what we hear from our customers is that you can assign it to more junior resources and allow your, um, you know, more expensive uh, security resources to focus on other things rather than, you know, kind of taking some of this action as well. And, you know, even some of those resources learning, right? I mean, there's not enough security resources out there. Like, they're learning more of that security side of things too. So, so as I look at this, it, it kind of begs two questions. One, you know, at home, I have set up an away feature with my smart lights. And now when I walk the dog, my bedroom lights go on. What happens if I get an alarm in, in the tool that I don't agree with? And I think piggybacked on that, how do I make sure that you're keeping up with all the new stuff? Because, you know, the Microsoft exposure is a great example of something that popped out real quick. If I'm a customer of Lumera, how do I know I'm covered? Yeah, no, I mean, and, and it's a really big differentiator, I would say, right, of Lumera and the type of service that we're providing is, you know, if I come to like this security expertise, right, in, in that team of security analysts, 
you know, one of the things that we hear really, really often is our customers feel like we're an extension of their team, right? It, you know, if you had that team of experts and you, you know, you say, I'm going into a management meeting and I need to know that we are protected from this exchange vulnerability, right? That security team is going to be doing their research. They're going to be doing, you know, you know, all spending all that time to figure it out. We're already doing that, right? Because that is what we live and breathe. Uh, you know, again, not to overuse the exchange vulnerability, but I mean, it, it's a perfect example of the value we bring to our customers, you know, being proactive, learning about these things, because, you know, before most people know about it and are already putting in the type of detections that are, are, are there, um, you know, from that side. And, you know, you mentioned what if I need tweaks and, and whatnot, and like, again, kind of being that extension of your team, right, within that, our, within application we have act, you have access to that analyst team that can make tweaks to your alerts, and um, it, it's really an ongoing, uh, you know, relationship. You might say, okay. Jacob, anything you, you want to add there? Yeah, I mean, just to build on that, right? The product is extremely customizable. When you work with us, we of course deploy the baseline, and then we work with you to determine, you know, is that suitable, or are we maybe sending you alerts for? Normal, you know, normal activity that looks suspicious in some cases, right? That might be a vulnerability scanner. And that's okay. We can absolutely add those indicators to allow lists so that you're not getting the alerts that you don't want to see, the ones that aren't going to be valuable to you. So we can absolutely customize the product with you. Um, and, you know, as far as, you know, staying up to date on the threats, right? Kevin mentioned this, but we, we have a dedicated team of incident detection engineers their job is to know infosec it's to keep up to date it's to look at what's happening in the industry and they're working with the product they're working with our threat feeds and threat intelligence to make sure that we are monitoring for the most up-to-date threats as they're happening you know another really kind of cool aspect of it too right is that we're we're not only working with you as an individual customer, but we have our, our whole breadth of customers as well, right? And so something we might learn from one customer can get applied to all of our customers. And so there is that that network effect of it as well, which would be you know impossible for, for any organization of any size. And so there's that additional value. So we've talked about the value of a SIM I'm going to keep trying to yell. I apologize if it's not working. Um, um, we've talked about some of the things that makes Lumera different, but the one I haven't necessarily heard is it takes you know months, if not years, to get a classic sim working. How is that going to be different with Lumera? Yeah, and, and we can, you know, we'll definitely talk through this, and you know, I would say that you know this is a good reason for us to have a, a future conversation with some of these people to understand people's tech stack and, and, and whatnot. But again, right, we have those, those pre-built integrations and, um, you know, I'll let Jacob kind of talk through it at a high level here, but um, yeah. Yeah. We're, and we're by no means, this is not an, an all inclusive list, but you know, these are some of our most common high security value tooling that we see. I like to say, if you can select one thing from each row here, if, if, applicable to your company or organization, you know, you're going to get really good coverage. The reality is that we work with a lot of organizations who, you know, one question I always ask is if I somehow got in and created a new, you know, domain admin account, would you know, or how long would it take you to know? And uh, the reality is we're working with a lot of places that have almost no detection capabilities in some cases. And so with those pre-built integrations, we can, uh, get value for them extremely quickly, and we're always uh, innovating on those and adding more. And Kevin just moved to our architecture diagram, and this is extremely simple to explain because we handle most everything. I like to say the only thing infrastructure-wise we ask for you to deploy is in step two here, right at the top of the screen. It's a Bluemira sensor. It acts as a uh, log collector service. And what we would do is we would deploy that in, in your environment with you, you know, local to the, the services or the applications you're trying to send logs from. And then it's just simply a matter of, of connecting them and sending logs. So on a firewall, it might be just setting up syslog forwarding. On a, you know, Windows, we use a, a tool called NXLog to send event logs to us over syslog. It's very simple. 
And for many of the cloud applications we support, it's uh, API-based pre-built connectors, it takes five minutes. So it's extremely simple. All of that goes outbound to us uh, via 443 HTTPS, and uh, you know it's all encrypted from there. Yeah, and, and I want to just touch on like really what this time frame looks like, right? Is you know we've talked about only an hour or two to deploy, right? And a lot of times people are like BS, right? But you know one of the things that we will talk about is that we do have free trials, and we always would want you to see for yourself. But you know Jacob and I work all the time on on deploying some of these trials, and you know I mean just like a couple of weeks ago we had a scenario where we actually did a a configuration call on a Monday, and I use this as an example because it works really well with a week period. But uh, it, it was cool. We we deployed on on we did a configuration on Monday. By Wednesday, we had deployed all of their detection rules. We had a follow up call by Friday, and just to review results, and they had uh, like five or six findings right away, and a handful of them were ones that we probably needed to tweak, right? But that's some of the ongoing service that we we generally do. But immediately there was interesting findings that they needed to investigate and one that they were very concerned and, and needed like real investigation. And the point I really make there is that the, the time to security and the time to value in less than a week, right? With only an hour or two worth of effort, um, it, it's really incredible. I mean, I've been, I've worked in, you know, tech and all of this for longer than I'd like to admit, but um, I've never experienced this type of time to, to value, I guess you might say. So, so we haven't, oh, there you go. Um, we would love to do more trials. I think to your point, this is really most powerful when you see it in action. Um, we haven't necessarily talked about price and this is not going to be a quoting conversation. I do think it, one of the things that Bloomera has done that is disruptive is rather than charging by the bit, by the, by the packet, you guys are just charging per user. And that really does stop the back end. You, know, you always have to keep feeding the stem. Uh, so I want to make sure that we talked about that for five seconds. But I'm kind of, I kind of get it. I kind of want Jacob to show it to me. <laughs> I want to see it in action. Can, can we do maybe a quick demo? Yeah, let's do it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to pass this over to Jacob. Stop sharing here. I think we all love love to talk on this side. So it'll be a, you know, a quick elevator pitch of a, a demo here. But, you know, if you're interested in learning more, hey, we, we love to get on the phone and, and talk. Let me share my screen here. All right. Hey, Kevin, can you just give me a quick uh, con confirmation that you can see this? Yep, looks good. All right, excellent. I'm going to turn off my video since I'm, I'm on a secondary screen here, not to distract. Excellent. So I'm actually going to come back to the screen in just a moment. This is really the bread and butter of Blumira as it relates to the threat detection portion. But I want to just talk very quickly about how do we get to this stage? We've talked so much about just send us the logs and we'll take care of the rest. And it really does all start at that Bloomera sensor that gets deployed. And you can have as many of these sensors as you want in your environment. I'm not going to dive too deep into these right now, but just know that they're extremely quick to deploy. You can have as many as you want in your environment and as many locations. We don't charge by the sensor by any means. And they can also act as honeypots in your environment. So if you're not currently using a honeypot or a canary server type of service today, it's included with our, our sensors. It's included with Blumira. It's not an extra charge or anything like that. And those are great. If you're not familiar with Honeypots, because they, they act as a, well, ours act as a, you know, a mock Synology NAS service with SMB and SIFS file shares. So they look really enticing to somebody who's on the network. They give you a sense of uh, detection when it comes to lateral movement and anyone trying to authenticate to those services. Um, that's about all I'll say for those. They're really neat. Um, I love them. And let me talk a little bit here about how we actually connect various services up to Bloomera. So for anything that uses syslog, right, there's no pre-configuration necessary. Just once the sensor's up, start sending your logs. It's going to be most of your networking devices. It's going to be, you know, your, your ASAs, your firepowers, your 
Uh, Paul Altos, any any major firewall or anything like that, we're going to support right off the bat, uh, as well as you know Windows logging as well to get sent to us over syslog. Nothing you need to do, and that's why we can deploy so quickly there. Now for you know applications like Duo or Cisco Umbrella, right? We use uh, pre-built API connectors, so there's nothing you need to do. You don't need to know a special Blumira API SDK or any sort of coding language to build these connectors. If I wanted to connect it to Duo, for instance, I'm going to just select the Duo module here, and then in my Duo console, I would create a new API application for this, paste in my three keys, as you see here, and I'd click Install. And that takes all of five minutes, being you know generous there. Uh, you have to log in and everything, so we'll give you five minutes for that. Uh, it's a very similar integration model for all of our cloud-based applications, including you know, even Office 365. So one important distinction to make is that we're not just for the services that you might have in your data center, whether your data center is, in, uh, is virtual or not, or you know, a physical data center. We're also for you know, some of those important cloud-based applications like Cisco Umbrella, like Duo, like Office 365 and uh, Google's G Suite or you know, Workplace, whatever they're, they're calling it these days. Uh, it's all just one you know, collection. It's all one product with Blumira, which makes it really easy to get insight into uh, you know, your Windows servers, your network devices, your workstations, as well as your cloud applications. And you really do need that full picture. So, yeah, Jacob, I think that's a really interesting point. I just want to like double click on a little bit because, you know, what we hear, right? I mean, with Blumira doing all of your, you know, uh, on premises type of uh, applications, your cloud applications, but also you know, cloud environments, right? And, you know, what we hear many times is that, you know, we have a solution in place for our on-prem and we have a, a solution in place for our cloud. It would be really nice if that was all consolidated. And that is some of the value we bring too, is that, you know, we are covering, you know, all of those environments all with one solution too. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's really nice to be able to query for user activity across Office 365, across Duo, and, and my Windows servers all at once from a single panel. Uh, it's really uh, quite the time saver from even just a you know, curiosity or an inspection standpoint, not let alone security. Uh, so once we've connected these services, and once maybe I start sending some logs to Blumira, that's when we're taking care of all of that backend care and feeding that we've, we've repeated that you know, you'd have to maintain with a, a traditional system. So everything from the parsing to identify information to the uh, normalization and categorization of the logs and the data fields to the threat intelligence feeds, all of that's maintained by us as well as the detection rules. So you don't have to know any special query language or any regex. We take care of all of the detection rules for you and we build custom ones based on your needs as well. Now, what that looks like is every log and every event goes through the system and gets analyzed either for single event behaviors that might trigger uh, or behaviors and trends over time. And you know, should we see anything suspicious, it will get bubbled up here in our dashboard. You can also choose to get an automated email or phone call or text message based on the severity of the alerts and the alert types. Now, what I always like to say is, you know, should you choose to get an alert every time a user account gets locked out, which you know we, we might not recommend that, right? That can be a bit noisy. It goes against what we typically see, but maybe you, you want to see it for audit purposes or some sort of compliance. Uh, you probably don't want to get a phone call for that, right? You probably don't even want to get an email for that. Maybe you just want it to be in the Blumira dashboard. But if I you know see that there's uh, you know extremely high likelihood of something that has a high impact happening in my environment, like a P1 threat, yes, give me a phone call, please. So it's highly customizable from that regard. Um, I'm going to walk through a couple of examples here just to to talk through the typical you know if I'm an attacker, what what, what does this look like, right? One of the first things I'm going to do is uh, you know do reconnaissance, determine maybe what what does this environment have. And while we don't necessarily want to alert on uh, just like a service like Shodan or Census that's inventorying your assets, because that's somewhat normal activity, you know, if we see that there is maybe behavior such as targeted reconnaissance scanning and it comes across our, um, our threat feeds, right? What does that look like? And this could be, you know, any firewall here that 
we see in this case it's a Apollo Alto in our example it could be any firewall we see you know next gen firewalls extremely commonly uh, first thing I'm going to do in every finding which is what I just clicked into looks and feels the same right they have the, the same layout and format I'm going to assign a responder to this it's simply somebody who's taking ownership or responsibility for looking into this now when I do that that unlocks a workflow that you just saw I also have an analysis of what happened so this includes the IP addresses that were scanned, the IP addresses for the source, uh, and you know why this might be important. What's also included is evidence. So at the bottom here, you can see where is our evidence for this detection. Now in some systems, right, this might have been four alerts separated. One thing that we do whenever possible is stack the evidence into the same findings so that you can uh, really look at this as an incident as a patterned trend and explore it as one whole picture instead of having bits and pieces that might be separate alerts. Uh, so that's something that's really nice about what we're doing here with this. Now I have here my open workflows. In this case, we saw early stage attack behavior, this targeted reconnaissance that we matched against our threat feeds, in this case, Talos and Proofpoint. I have a few options here, right? If I look at my workflows, in this case, I have a single step workflow, but these workflows give you guidance as to how to remediate or what to do next. In some cases, they might be three, four, or five steps in order to guide you to the appropriate response. I have a few options here based on, on the data and the, the integration that I have. Uh, in this case, any next-gen firewall supports dynamic block lists. And so Kevin mentioned earlier uh, automation. And one of the automated responses we can take when you're running a firewall that supports dynamic block lists is just block these IP addresses right off the bat. And so I can say here, based on those dynamic block lists, immediately block those. I can say, you know, maybe I don't want to do anything or we'll block those manually. Now, if I had any questions on this, maybe I wasn't sure what exactly I was looking at. Maybe I needed additional context. Uh, maybe I wanted to see where else these two IP addresses I saw here were seen. Now I can communicate with Blumira's security analyst team right here in product. Uh, I have access to this, this bench of security experts. Maybe I just need additional context for this. Maybe I, I want them to you know, create and save a report to my Blumira console for me that shows anywhere else these IP addresses were seen in my environment, if anywhere. Uh, I have access to that security team right here. And that's when Kevin mentions an extension of your team that's one way that we're presenting that to you, but we truly do think of this as a partnership with our customers. And the ones that get the best value out of Blue Mirror are the ones that work with us the most often and the closest. Now, let me show you what these dynamic block lists look like here. This is really, really, really neat. I can just say, okay, we saw this come in. Uh, this could be password spraying or brute forcing on a, a VPN endpoint just as easily. I'm going to say, hey, let's resolve that. Yes, this is valid and we're going to block that threat. Now, what that does here is it opens up the ability for me to look into these block lists. And so I can see I have these two blocked IP addresses now. We're added to an IP address block list that I've configured on my, my firewall in this case to look at this list. If I open this up in another tab, you'd see about 80,000 IP addresses. Same thing for the domains and the URLs. These are based off of our threat feeds and other, uh, other feeds that we use as well. Now, one thing I always get asked is, hey, that's, that's great. You took that action, but... You know, can, can we just make that happen? If you see it, can you just block it automatically? And yeah, it's just a matter of clicking this button right here. That threat will automatically be blocked in the future. You won't have to take any manual action uh, in the product at all. As soon as we see it, it gets added to that block list and it's just done. That malicious reconnaissance scanning, that password spraying, that brute forcing, uh, whatever it might be, it's just blocked at this point. So that's a really great example of some of the automation in the product. Um, there are a handful of other, you know, other demonstrations and other examples we could give here uh, around what we're detecting in the product. But you know, just know that from beginning early stages of reconnaissance and password spraying, all the way up to you know, data exfiltration, all of those are detections that we have in the product and everything in between. We're looking at process level information in some cases to determine uh, suspicious behavior. We're looking at um, you know, data exfiltration. We're looking at privileged escalation. We're looking at tools like Mimikatz that can be used 
to do credential harvesting. So all of this is something that you can detect with Blumira. For the sake of time, I'm going to stop the demo here, but just know that there is much more to the product. We didn't even touch on the reporting aspect of it. So if that's something that's of interest to you, we're always happy to hop on the line and, and you know talk more about Blumira, but I'm going to stop sharing for the sake of time uh, and we can go from there. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. Um, you know, just to summarize that, you know, I mean, I, I think in general it is, you know, the, the whole concept of, of this webinar is is simplicity, right? And, uh, um, you know, when you look at that, it, it is very straightforward. You know, most organizations don't have time to figure out what is important and what they need to do. You know, looking at how all of those threats are prioritized, right? That is not something that generally just happens in other tools or when you're monitoring logs, right? We are defining that for you. And that's of course, customizable depending on what you might think is, is important. But generally speaking, you don't have to think about that and you're not getting a million alerts. And um, so it's, it's really cool, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just kind of speaking about where we go from here, you know, we do want to open this up for questions. I'm not sure if there are any, I haven't been able to see that, but, um, you know, as far as like next steps, right, we would be more than happy to set up a, a, another follow-up call to do a more in-depth demo and get into some of the more details, understand your tech stack and, you know, how, how we can fit into that. But I would say most importantly is we want you to try it for yourself. Right. It, it's it's very, very low commitment in time and effort. Right. I mean, literally, you know, an hour or two of your time to, to get this going so that you can see what it actually looks like in your environment. And, you know, we have free trials. Um, and what's really cool about our trials is two things. One, you are getting real security value in your trial. And whatever you have done in that trial, if you chose to move forward with Lumera, uh, all that work is already done. Um, so really, really cool there. But yeah, any, any, are there any questions out there? Not being an expert in WebEx, I'm not sure to where you can see that. But. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Lynn, if you want to take the dangerous move of unmuting people and find out what they're doing. Uh, you know, I would echo well, you perhaps do that. You know, if you're a customer who just didn't think you could afford a SIM, I think it's worth a conversation. I think you'll be pleased with its affordability. If yes. you're a customer who has a SIM, the SIM was run by Bob. Bob left and no one knows how to run the SIM. This is an easier way to solve that problem than trying to find Bob. Um, if you've got a managed service and you just feel like you, they're not being really intimate with you and relational with you. They, they just tell you you're broken and then they, that's it. I think we can help you. So I'm super excited about what Blue Merit is doing. What's even more exciting to me is because they're just kind of getting really going. I know what the future is going to be even better than it is today. So making that investment today, all that other goodness just comes along for the ride. So, um, I don't know if there's any other questions you can put in the chat panel. Um, if we are unmuted, please raise your hand and, and ask them. Um, otherwise, I can keep topic, talking as loud as can. I, I feel badly for Don, who's in the office behind me. Yeah, I think. Um, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I said, I think it's a really interesting product, especially for small teams like ours. Um, so I'm probably going to look at getting a, um, a demo for sure. Um, but uh, um, I'm curious. So you mentioned that there's a, uh, the, the SIS log, right? Are you, would that, that or next log, would that be installed on every Windows system? So like clients and servers, everything like that? Is there a reboot required for it? Or does it just install and start working? Stuff like that. What kind of outreach is it? Oh, great question. Um, it's really, really simple. Three megabyte download. It doesn't require a reboot. It runs as a service on those machines. You would install it and drop our custom configuration file. You just need to change a single line in that file to point towards the sensor IP address so it knows where to send those logs. And uh, you can deploy it in bulk via GPO or SCCM, whatever you might have there. Yeah.
does the sensor like a, an OBA or uh, is it a, a, an agent that gets installed on a server? Yeah, it's, it's software that gets installed on, on a server. So it's not, not an OVA yet, definitely something we've talked about. Okay, so on Windows, kind of a Windows server, or uh, is it a Linux? Yeah, it'd be Linux today, yes. Okay. Yeah. If, it's a good point. If anyone's interested, actually, all of our documentation is public on the Blue Mirror website. So if it's something that is interesting, you're wondering a little bit deeper, hey, how does this thing work? Um, all of our documentation and integration data is public on the website. You don't even need to log in. So you can go and look at the full full list of everything there if you're interested. I think I heard somebody else chime in as well. Was there another question? Maybe not. Well, I think we are uh, at good time. Um, so, you know, really appreciate everybody joining here. And, and there, there it is. Um, again, you know, we want to be uh, that, that tool, which is an easy point of entry, which has never been the case in, in these type of solutions, right? I mean, it is going to be far more cost effective than you would imagine. Easy to implement, no ongoing management and, and just that high fidelity security. So, uh, would love to, to, you know, give you the opportunity to see it on your own in your own environment. Yeah, I, I will close on behalf of Surrey to say thank you for attending. Um, you know, we sell Cisco solutions, cybersecurity solutions. We love them. It's tied together with SecureX. That's an awesome tool. Um, with Blumera on top, now I have a really excellent on-premise and cloud visibility, threat detection, and response offer. Um, that I think is approachable by all of our customers. So thank you, thank you for t taking the time today, and I look forward to working with you all in the future. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye.